Google needs to fire workers. TikTok needs to be banned. And BlockFi is declaring bankruptcy? If you think the world is falling apart, yes, yes it is. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This is your daily news. So uh, I don't make jokes about this at all. Um, uh, Russia has been shooting missiles into Ukraine and, and looks like some have hit Poland and killed a couple people in Poland. So uh, Poland is a member of NATO. Um, if I get any more news, I'll update. I made a separate video about it. I just want to mention it. I'm, I'm not ignoring it. This is just uh, something that is a part of the daily news and, and we'll keep track of this story. So this is definitely the headline story though. Um, also too, in the, in the world, um, Google got a letter from one of their big investors, uh, TCI. Uh, basically they're saying, hey everyone uh, over at Google, we think that you overhired uh, and overpaid people and you need to cut. And this is very similar to the letter that um, Altimeter Capital sent uh, Meta Facebook, which we've talked about before, um, which basically saying, hey, <laughs> Meta Facebook, you need to cut spending, cut people, this kind of stuff. So um, it's really quite interesting when um, essentially the, the, the big investors, right? Uh, people who have, you know, real stake and real ownership in the company are, are calling for their, uh, you know, change in, in practices because they, they're like, basically, hey, you're losing our investment. Now, the way the, the, the shares are structured over at Google, though, is the founders, um, I think they only own, they own like a small portion, I wanna say like say 12% of the, the company, but they have um, voting rights, right? So sometimes companies will structure it that way to where their, their share percentage is less, but their voting rights are way more. Um, so, you know, this is sort of like, and you can see Apple, uh, or sorry, Google, Google Alphabet is declared to a comment, um, but basically they're saying, you know, all of Silicon Valley has seen similar problems of having overhired and overcompensated people uh, and they're taking action. And then he says, uh, this is um, the hedge fund to Google. Um, this is a broad theme across the major tech companies and that need to attack costs, but Alphabet is doing the opposite. So he's saying here, we're looking at this, the rapid pace of hiring at Google internet business, which accounts for more than 99% of Alphabet's, Alphabet's revenue, right? So um, essentially uh, they're just saying like, you know, you're just hiring too much. You, you added 36,000 workers in the past 12 months and um, you know, you're lifting your, your amount of people you have by like 25%, even though advertising revenue is slowing. So it, it is a bit uh, concerning. And this, like I said, is something that it's not just Google, it's all of the, the tech companies. Um, also too, they were saying, which is really quite interesting, you can read this here, um, pointing to the high growth Alphabet reported to run up to and during the coronavirus pandemic, um, TCI said cost discipline had not been a priority until last year but it complained that the latest hiring binge had driven the company's operating profit down from uh, 39% last year to 32% in the latest quarter. And the group's median salary at nearly 300,000 was two thirds higher uh, than Microsoft's. So basically what's going on is Google pays more than Microsoft, essentially is what we're seeing here. And, and I would guess that then Google probably has uh, better people, or you can make the case, you know, maybe uh, where Google's offices are, uh, in you know cities that maybe cost more, so it's not exactly a one-to-one -one when you're comparing salaries. But also, to be fair, I mean they they are all going to have workers in Silicon Valley, so it's like they're not. Um, but uh, you know it was interesting because they, they were saying you know your your profit margins are going down as well. You're paying people too much. You hire too many people, and you're in a slowing ad revenue environment. So basically, they're just saying Google you need to cut costs. Um, also, too going on, um, we actually covered this story yesterday. Um, and, and it was interesting because we read the, uh, the email that they sent out to all the customers that we're talking about BlockFi here. And basically they're trying to reassure customers that your money is okay and we're trying to figure this out, you know, and trying our bestest. I made a joke about that. Um, it was interesting because I, I saw uh, in the original email, they mentioned the name of the um, law firm uh, that they are working with. As it turns out, um, the name of the particular partner in said law firm has been released. And basically the person, <laughs> is a bankruptcy lawyer. So, you know, I, I, I would have, I, if I had to bet, if I had to bet right now, hey, is, is BlockFi gonna, you know, declare bankruptcy? I would bet yes. <laughs> That's what I would bet on. I think the odds are way higher than not. Um, we do know though too, which is also something that is concerning is like, okay, if, if BlockFi is gonna be uh, firing people, you can read the, you know, read the headlines here. It's like BlockFi prefers potential bankruptcy as crypto contagion spreads. Um, they're, talk, they're talking about like firing people. Also too, we know executives have left BlockFi. Like, like you're having less and less staff. You're having, you know, talks with a bankruptcy lawyer. It, it doesn't look good. And I, I don't think there's any way, other way to paint that. Just wanna just keep you guys in the loop on that kind of thing. Um, also too, this is kind of interesting. 
Uh, the government is getting more aggressive on discussions on whether or not um, TikTok will be banned in, in the USA. Uh, so um, this is from the FBI uh, director, essentially. He's saying, you know, we're concerned that um, China can track uh, the location of, you know, US citizens whenever they want. And then one of the proposals is if we want to keep TikTok in the USA, is change the way data is route, uh, routed. And I believe they would like, you know, route the data, say, from China to Cisco, and then, you know, then to the USA, just basically regulate how the data is, and, and, or maybe make it so the data can never leave uh, the US kind of thing. So um, it's certainly true you can have a Chinese company and just like set up a, you know, completely separate uh, entity in the USA. You could do that kind of thing, and, and that's what they're gonna work out if we're gonna indeed keep TikTok uh, in the USA. One of the things I will say, you guys may or may not know, if you look at the Chinese version of TikTok, it's called Douyin. Uh, it's actually closer to YouTube uh, than, well, it's more like YouTube. <laughs> um, if you look at TikTok and say USA, it's just people dancing and it just, in my opinion, makes it people dumb. Um, whereas the TikTok in, um, or Douyin is what it's called in, in China, it's, like I said, it's more like YouTube. It, it just has a lot of all different types of videos. The other thing is too, it's, it's very, very corporate in China um, because free speech does not exist in China. So they don't want just user generating whatever they want. Uh, so it's a very different, and so you know you can make the case uh, that TikTok is making Americans dumb, and that's on purpose. <laughs> so love to hear guys' thoughts on that. Um, Marco Rubio is like um, this Republican side. He's been pretty adamant about attacking um, TikTok and, and just like outright banning it. Now, uh, to be fair, you could certainly make the case that um, if TikTok were to go, it would it would benefit American companies, be it your Meta, uh, be it um, I guess Snap would probably benefit. Uh, you could make the case that Google slash YouTube would benefit. So certainly American companies would have uh, interest in that. Um, you know, and, that, and that's to, to decide. It, 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 would be a, it would be a major thing, though, if suddenly uh, the U.S. says, hey, you know, we're, we're going to start banning, um, you know, Chinese tech companies from doing our business here. Just think about the repercussions. And then China's like, okay, fine. We're going to ban, you know, all your tech companies. And, you know, you, you get the point of this. So this is, this is actually a, a major thing. And also, too, um, I, I want to be clear on this because we've had this discussion on this channel before. Uh, TikTok is not alone in using your data. <laughs> so uh, all social media platforms, um, essentially, uh, if, if, if the thing you're using is free, then you are the product, you know, they're selling your data to, to marketers and stuff like that. So we'll keep an eye on that story. Um, this is an interesting one. Um, Walmart uh, has a little bit better uh, outlook than before. Um, Walmart is one of those that usually during a recessionary period is a company that will benefit Walmart, Dollar Tree, um, Target, TJ Maxx, these kind of stores, basically discount stores because people are uh, concerned about, you know, uh, my money, <laughs> of course. And uh, one thing that's really quite interesting ab about Walmart is um, they're saying uh, a lot more of their business is coming from people who make over 100,000. Um, the other thing too, was really interesting is that um, they actually had to pay uh, fines uh, for the opioid crisis. Um, basically, regulators are saying, you know, you're not enforcing like how you, you know, give out opioids to, to people. And, um, Walmart basically paid the fine all in, in like a year, whereas like a CVS and Walgreens spread it out to 10 to 15 years. So uh, Walmart is essentially able to recover a little bit sooner. So, you know, we'll see if, if, if this is essentially bottom out and coming back up. Um, they also had an uh, inventory um, uh, uh, problem before. Basically, if you don't know, a lot of the retailers, uh, essentially during the pandemic, you couldn't get any products, right? So customers want all to buy all the stuff and you couldn't get anything like, for example, let's say, uh, you want to buy a whole bunch of Xbox, right? Everyone wants to buy Xbox for Christmas. You don't have any Xbox. And so then you put in an order for Xbox that never comes. You ended up not selling any Xbox, okay? Um, then eventually a year later, for example, you have a million Xbox and now no one has any money to buy said Xbox. So th there was a problem with that kind of situation with Walmart and the stores. They just had too much inventory and um, not enough uh, buyers because things had changed. It came too slow, essentially. Um, and um, actually, that's it right there. The other thing is too, is um, this was a story, and, and I hate to report these kind of stories, but I, I don't want to ignore them because I think, I think it sets a bad precedent if, if you know, boys don't talk about it, since I'm a boy, right? And, and I think we should all take this thing seriously. So the headline is, uh, Goldman Sachs paid more than 12 million uh, to a partner accusing a bank of misogyny. So, um, and I'll just tell you guys, I mean, it's just, it's just real. It, it's, you know, you work on Wall Street, you work in any big company and you have a bunch of boys doing boy stuff um, sometimes they say things that are inappropriate and hopefully, you know, we can make, um, make, you know, the workplace more suitable for girls. And I say boy and girl, I can say man and women. I know, I know the words. I'm just using, you know, different words. Um, the, the thing is though, I, I just acknowledge that, um, I, I, I think it's important that we make the workplace, um, you know, comfortable for everyone. Um, you know, I'm married and I would be, 
unhappy and uh, upset if my wife came home and say like, yeah, hey, you know, my boss keeps saying like, weird, you know, sexual things to me and stuff like that, you know, that, that kind of stuff. So I, I don't know what was said here um, at Goldman. All I know is that they paid a settlement of $12 million. So, um, you know, I, in my opinion, you don't just pay people money just out of the kindness of your heart. You might have done something wrong or something like that. So, you know, we'll see. I just want to say I take this so seriously and I'm not ignoring the headline. So, um, but I don't know the full situation and, and that's it. Um, and then uh, this is actually a really funny one. If you're a fun, if you're a fan of Steve Jobs, uh, you can actually buy his old Birkenstocks. <laughs> I mean, if you're a fan, you know why not? Um, and uh, in fact, someone did. They paid uh, two hundred and eighteen thousand dollars for a pair of Birkenstocks uh, that Steve Jobs had. I think he had them in the seventies and eighties. So <laughs> read this year. <laughs> True story. Um, on Sunday, an un undisclosed. So the person wants to keep it private. Undisclosed buyer purchased a well-worn pair of brown suede two-strap sandals that Jobs wore in the 70s and 80s for over 218,000. Uh, the highest price ever paid for a pair of sandals at auction. <laughs> so these are the, the Steve, I gotta show them again. These Steve Jobs sandals are the most expensive uh, sandals in history at an auction. So if you've ever wondered, and, and that ever comes up in the trivia game, you'll know the answer, Steve Jobs sandals, okay? Uh, most expensive sandals at auction in history. <laughs> it's so funny. Uh, St Steve Jobs wore these sandals during many pivotal moments in Apple's history, the auction house said it online. In 1976, he hatched the beans of our computer in his lost Altos garage with Apple's co-founder Steve Wozniak uh, while occasionally wearing these sandals. It's funny. So they're saying like, hey, this is the sandals that he wore when he invented Apple computer. You too can own them. And uh, what's, what's more funny too, uh, true story, um, they will give you an NFT, as it says here, and now they're off to home to some lucky buyer who will also receive a non-fungible token or NFT featuring a 360-degree uh, uh, digital representation of the sandals and the book, uh, 213 Most Important Men in My Life, and it shows uh, pictures of Steve Jobs wearing the sandals. So I'd love to hear your thoughts on that and um, all the things that we talked about in the news. Would you buy Steve Jobs sandals? And um, what do you think about the whole Google thing? Uh, the Walmart thing, the BlockFi thing, and also what's going on um, with Russia and Ukraine. So thanks again for watching, everyone. This has been your daily news.